Hello and welcome. During this session, we're going to present an in-depth demo where we will build the necessary infrastructure to support a fairly sophisticated scenario for the workload burst case from customer's on-prem environment to Google Cloud. There is a lot to cover, so let's get started. The idea behind this demonstration is to showcase the cloud benefits for EDA customers that consider to start their journey to cloud, specifically to highlight the features such as cloud elasticity, flexibility, and scalability, and the real value that cloud can bring to these companies, which is a shorter time to market. The ability to access much larger resource pools in the cloud enables engineering teams to compress the total time it takes to complete their jobs. And with EDA workloads running in the cloud, these teams can perform more design iterations per day and get these designs out to the market much faster. We are going to start off by presenting the setup reviews to create this demo. We've tried to build a simplified architecture and have tried it to be as close as possible to real-world EDA architectures used today by some of our customers and to run a flow that resembles the EDA burst to cloud scenario. This demo consists of seven steps, and we will go over each one before diving in. We're going to start with on-prem system preparations. From on-prem worker, we will install and configure the Open Python, which is an open source general purpose multi-threaded many core processor and framework environment. In our case, we are exploiting it as an infrastructure that is used to configure and run simulations, and in particular will serve as a source for configuration files that will be used for regression runs in GCP. Next, we are going to deploy two NetApp CVO instances in GCP using Terraform and configure the flex cache relationships between on-prem and GCP environments. We will configure NetApp CVO1 to act as both high-performance storage for EDA workloads in the cloud and as a cache for open Python configuration files from on-premises. To an EDA workload in the cloud, the configuration files appear to be local, and there is no need to mirror all the tools and libraries to the cloud. Get just the data you need, where and when you need it. We will configure the NetApp CVO2 instance as a target for the cloud regression run results. And by creating a reverse cache relationship, these results appear to be local to engineers working on on-prem. During this step, we are going to create a Slurm cluster. Later on, we will use special arguments that are provided to the regression run command and launch each test in a Slurm bad job, allowing for tests to be run in parallel. Here, we will run two regression runs. First, we'll be using 10 GCP workers, and the second will use 20 GCP workers. The goal will be to present the effect of compute scaling in the flex cache technology implementation. Next, we are going to present one of the benefits behind the flex cache. We will showcase the ability to access the same files from both on-prem and GCP environments by going over the regression runs results from both locations. Going forward, we will demonstrate a case where these regression runs results can be copied to Google Cloud Storage for later on analysis or archiving. And the last step will be just a GCP environment cleanup. We will delete it all and remain just with the regression run results in GCS. So let's dive into the demo. As it was presented before, we're starting with an on-prem environment configuration. As you can see here, we are using the NetApp hardware storage system. From the on-prem worker pre-mounted to the on-prem volume, we are installing the on-prem Python environment, while created configuration files will be used as a source for the future regression runs in GCP. We switch over to the GCP environment, where we will deploy two NetApp CVO instances using Terraform, followed by the Flex Cache Relationships configuration. We're starting with the clear environment, and through connection to the Bastion host, we are verifying the correctness of prepare ahead Terraform configuration and starting the deployment process. After executing the deployment, the progress can be monitored through NetApp Cloud Manager interface, and once it completes, we got the relevant information that will be used in the next steps of the demo. By refreshing Google Cloud Console window, we can see two new GC instances are created. Having completed the CVO's deployment, we are going right in and creating the flex cache relationships. 
First, we will create the connection where the on-prem volume will serve as a source, and the CVO1 will be configured with the flex hash volume. To speed up the configuration process, we will use a simple Python script that utilizes the NetApp on top REST API commands to prepare and configure the flex hash relationship. We insert the required information about both source and target NetApp systems and execute the script. Once it's done, we are continuing with what is called reverse caching configuration, where the CVR2 volume will be used as a source and the on-prem NetApp system will be configured with the flex cache volume. We will use the same method of executing the configuration through the prepared head of the time script. We can verify the successful configuration by accessing the on-prem worker and trying to mount it to create a minute ago on-prem flex cache volume. Having enabled the flex cache relationships, we're heading and deploying the slum workload manager. This manager will be used to orchestrate over the regression runs in GCP. The link to slum deployment files can be found in the comments below or in the demo walkthrough documentation. The SLARM will be deployed using Terraform, so we switch over to the configuration file and update it with all the relevant information required for the deployment. Again, all the information can be found in the demo walkthrough documentation. It takes a couple of minutes for the installation to complete. We can see the new SLARM instances are created in our project and it will take additional 15 minutes for the deployment process to complete. While waiting for the slum deployment completion, we are going to create performance dashboards using Google Cloud Monitoring. The goal is to be able to follow the IO flow during the regression runs and present the NetApp CVO's read, write, throughputs. We can verify slum deployment successful completion by connecting to the slum login node. It's mounted to both NetApp CVOs. We can access on-prem data using flex cache, and slum nodes are ready to be allocated to run the workload. Now we are ready to execute the regression runs. First, we will be using 10 workers and then we'll perform the same but with scaling the workers from 10 to 20. Each regression run will include 46 tests. The run will be started from the Slurm login node and once started, it will require the access to relevant configuration files which are currently located at on-prem NetApp volume. Once these files are cached locally in GCP, Slurm bad job is started, allowing for regression tests to be run in parallel. New regression run results directory is created at CVO2 and 10 new compute instances are created in our project. And now let's monitor the IO flow. Newly created workers are mounting to both NetApp CVO instances and reading the run configuration data through CVO1. Since the data is not presented locally, it is fetched from on-prem volume. Of course, all that is completely transparent to the workers running the test in GCP, and the configuration files appear for them to be local. We can see that the worker's CPU utilization is getting higher once they are starting to run the test, and the test results are written back to the dedicated volume created at NetApp CVO2 instance. Once we are done with the first regression run, we want to verify that the results folder is accessible for both GCP and on-prem environments. First, we are accessing the results folder located at CBO2 from GCP instance, and as you can see, there is a list of the completed tests. Now, using the flex cache, we can access exactly the same folder from on-prem worker and can read any of the files from there. Before continuing to the next step, we can refresh the Google Cloud Console window and we can see that all the 10 workers are deleted automatically by the storm upon job completion. And now we will execute the same regression run, but this time with 20 instead of 10 workers. The first step will be to update the slum configuration and validate it. We are changing the number of workers to be deployed from 10 to 20.
and validating the configuration saved. Starting a new job right now, the new run starts quicker since the part of the configuration files were cached and located locally in the cloud. Once a new job is started, we can see that the new regression run results directory is created at CVO2 and 20 new compute instances are created at our project. While monitoring the IF flow, we can identify pretty much the same behaviors as we did with the first run. But this time, much less data is fetched from on-prem environment since it's already partially cached in the cloud. Workers' maximum read throughput is twice higher than with previous run. And while writing back the results to CVO2 instance, the overall max throughput is higher. All that happens because we have now twice workers running the same workload in parallel. This run completes much faster in comparison to the first attempt. And the time savings are very clear. And again, as with previous run, we can validate that all the results can be accessible for the further analysis from both environments, GCP and the on-prem. By refreshing our Google Cloud console window, we can verify that all the workers are deleted again by the alarm automatically upon the completion of the test. Now, when we have all the results in the GCP, we can move it to a less expensive storage option where it can be accessed later on for further analysis or just being archived. We are creating new GCS bucket and copying both results directories there. Once copied, it can be accessed through Google Cloud Console or by any other available means. Having done all that and assuming that we currently don't need anything else from our cloud infrastructure, we can go ahead and clean it all. After deleting the flex cache configuration, we proceed to deleting the NetApp CVOs using Terraform. While running that, we can destroy Slurm deployment as well, again, by using the Terraform. Once everything is completed, we can see that our GCP project is empty and our regression runs results are still remaining for access to GCS.